In previous videos, I've talked to you about charging my car and kind of what a pain in the neck that is in general. I've also talked about the battery and battery usage and how the battery consumption works and those kinds of things. But I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into this topic. Over time, I've been keeping track of my car's charging and understanding how the battery life is going and kind of keeping track of what it looks like. So when I first got the car, when I'd plug it in and charge up to 100%, I was getting about 190, 191 miles, it would tell me on the, on the uh, a little indicator. But over time, that dropped to 187, and more recently, it's dropped down, and it looks like 182. What gives? Well, there's a couple of things happening here. The first is there are conditions outside of the car that impact how it charges. Of course, there's uh, the temperature has an impact on how it actually charges. There's the current and the, uh, the voltage that actually have a, uh, an impact on it. Don't worry, there's no, there's no test here. I'm not going to be uh, taking any information. You're not gonna get a grade at the end of the quarter or anything. I'm just sharing some information that you might be interested in the same way I am. So I hope you, uh, hope you enjoy that. Some quick definitions. Voltage is the electromotive force, the potential in the electric field that goes around. We've got the amp, which is short for the ampere and the unit of electrical current. And then you have resistance, which is a measure of the opposition to that force. So when you take a look at the three together, what you're seeing is like you can almost consider it like a pipe. A pipe has voltage going in and the resistance changes the current that goes along through the pipe. Then there's also the metering itself. So the way that a traditional battery meter works is you take a uh, battery and you put a resistor across the top of it and you measure the resistance that goes across it. And then you can estimate how much battery you have based on that. So what happens sometimes, uh, especially with like a, a traditional 12 volt car battery, when you put the battery in the car and you test it, it may tell you that it has 11 and a half, 12 volts, something like that. But the amperage may have dropped off a little bit. So there's another factor we have to consider when we think about the uh, usage of the battery and that's the Coulomb. Now, how do these things relate? Let's talk about that for a minute. So in a traditional electrical circuit, you have the electrical potential, you have the uh, voltage, you have the amperage, and you have uh, the uh, resistance that goes across it. And the three are closely related because you can figure out one knowing the other two. From a simple circuit standpoint, it's really easy to understand how the circuits work. Now, what happens is, because if you think about uh, the current flow going around a circuit, you have a battery and a light bulb, let's say, and you're just going around the circuit and the battery lights the light bulb. There's an amount of electricity that goes through and some of it's used for the, uh, for the light bulb, and uh, it actually lights the bulb. And if you put more electricity, it might light the bulb up brighter and so forth. So you can use more electrons to, to flow into it. Now, the Coulomb is actually a measurement of the, uh, the energy over time. So it, it's the amount of amperage over one second. So there's actually a, a calculation you can do, and this is tightly related to it in the standard uh, nomenclature. You can use the Coulomb, that would be measured as a C, to uh, actually take care of uh, what, your, or what the uh, uh, current usage is over time. So that becomes an important factor in this car when you start looking at the battery. Rather than putting a resistance against it, they're actually figuring out what the electron voltage is in the Coulomb factor to actually do a calculation and figure out what percentage is left on the battery. So there's actually something that's happening there actively. Plus, with the software that's running on the car, they're actually doing a calculation to figure out how much energy uh, is left in the car to figure out what the mileage is or the percentage of battery is. Now the mileage is based on your driving habits to a large degree and how many miles this car can go based on what you do. So this is where it gets really confusing and kind of interesting. So when I look at my numbers, and I've seen that it's gone down over time, and it's gone from that, that 200 number and kind of sloping down to closer to uh, the 180 number. Something else I've noticed is when you look at how many miles you drive versus how many miles it says you have left. When I first got the car, I was getting about 60% efficiency. So for every 10 miles that it said I was consuming in the battery, I was actually driving six miles. Now it's closer to 75%. My efficiency with the car has gotten better. So for every 10 miles I consume off the battery, I'm actually driving seven and a half miles. So the, the ratio is getting closer and I'm actually using the battery more efficiently. So I would expect the number to go down. That's kind of a given in that sense that the number would actually go down and I might actually see a lower number. It doesn't mean that my battery has any last capacity. It doesn't mean that my battery is not charging as full as it was before. There's some oddities that happen with the software. Now I've told you that I 
keep track of all of my charges. I have a little app I wrote and I write information to a database. I pull the car and I actually get information about the car that I put into this database and then I use that information. That's how I know I get about 75% efficiency out of the miles and so forth. I also know how many miles that it puts on there and what the actual number of kilowatt hours are that go into the car. So I'm keeping track of that all the time. Now here's the funny thing. When I did it one day, I was plugged in at work, I saw that it put in uh, 16 kilowatt hours to, to charge up my car to 90%. And I saw that I had, uh, um, that it had added, uh, I don't know, 60 miles. I don't remember what the number was. Uh, and so the top mileage that I was gonna get out of the car was about 181 miles, okay? I left it plugged in for about 20 more minutes. And for some reason, the car came back and told me it was finished charging a second time, which I thought was really strange. So I pulled the app again and nothing changed in terms of the numbers that were there. It was the same amount of current that had gone in, into the car, so the same kilowatt hours, and the same amount of mileage had been added. Nothing changed there, but now the meter read 183 miles left. How did that happen? That was a weird thing that happened in the software because it was taking that little bit of residual energy and making a calculation to determine how much further I could go with the car. And this is what happens over time. Now, if you think about the, um, the way that the battery meter works on any device, so on my phone, on my, uh, on my uh, computer, on my car, any of these things that have a battery meter, they're inherently flawed and not gonna give you an absolutely accurate number. And the reason has everything to do with this Coulomb and the fact that when you do the resistance across it, you're not gonna get an absolutely accurate picture of exactly how much energy is left. It's a good estimate, it's close, but because of the non-linear nature of the way the energy is reduced from the battery, you will actually get a, a pretty good estimate for it, but not an exact number. So you kind of have to take it a little bit with a grain of salt and go, okay, I have some amount, some percentage left, but it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one what I think it is because the calculation is so strange based on this, this uh, uh, number that drops off in an exponential sense when you get to a certain percentage on your battery. Same with charging it. When you charge it, it charges up at a certain point and then it flattens off. And uh, I wanted to talk about that for a minute too. So let's take, a, let's take an example here. Um, this is uh, what I have here and what I'm showing you is sort of a, a pictorial that I created. Now I know my artistic skills may not be the best artistic skills, but I wanted to share this with you. So here's uh, this, this field that I've got here. Over on the side, these, these little shelves, we'll call them the plates inside the battery. The green is the, the uh, lithium that's going to uh, move the electrons over, and little smiley faces are electrons. So as we start the charging, we can see that the electrons are moving over at a certain pace, and they're filling up the cabinet. That's what happens. They start filling up the cabinet, filling up the cabinet. And then as you get closer to 80%, 90%, somewhere in that range, it slows down considerably. And these last few electrons are finding spaces that they can fit in. And it actually works that way so that they're charging, putting the charge into the uh, plating that the, then can be used. So my battery meter now says 100%, but there may still be room for one or two more electrons in there. One or 200, one or two, doesn't matter. But there's, the point is that you, you still have room for more electrons to potentially go in there and you're stopping the charge. So it's kind of an interesting thing that happens here. And you can see how it kind of slows down and you can see how the battery meter goes against it and you get a sense of what it takes to charge it. Now, this is just a quick pictor pictogram. I know I'm not depicting it 100% accurately. It's just sort of an idea to give you that sense of it. The discharge is the same thing, just going the other way. They're coming out of the, off of the shelving and moving across. So when I look at those and I realize how that works, you have to consider that that is what's happening. So my little meter is not gonna be exactly where I want it to be every single time. It's gonna be close, but it's not gonna tell me exactly what's going on there. Now that leads me around to the other thing that I've been thinking about. This whole thing about, I said before that I wanted to charge at 90% almost every night. And I've kind of rethought that. So what I've taken to is trying something different. I set my meter to 80% instead of 90%. And I, uh, I only charge when the meter goes down below 50%, right around there somewhere. So I'm staying in that range of 50 to 80% all the time. Now, if I'm not gonna drive the car for a couple of days, I go ahead and charge it and leave it plugged in. If I'm going to be driving more, I will go ahead and charge up more or I will charge more often because I need to go somewhere. I need to you know, take the car out somewhere, so I might actually charge it a little bit more. But in general, I'm only charging it between the 50 and 80%. Have I seen any degrade degradation in battery? 
maybe a little, but I don't think it's a lot. And again, back to my little uh, method of collecting data from the car, the thing that I've seen is, as over time, when I first picked up the car, I should have had a top battery uh, distance of 215 miles. Um, now it's down to a top of about 200, just 199, 200, right in there. So I've had about a 5% loss over the battery. Now part of that has to do with the fact that early on in September or October, there was a uh, something that went to the car, it was a software update. And in that software update, there was a huge change to the way the battery is consumed. And uh, it gives you more power in the car, and the battery usage goes down a little bit. So uh, what happened was that was the biggest jump. That was about a three and a half to almost 4% drop in what my battery usage would be at that point. So, uh, you know, when I think about that, I've really only had maybe a, about a 1% loss over time, one and a half maybe. And I'm not even sure that it's actually a loss. What I'm looking for in the data is to see if there's anything about uh, more information about the actual battery itself and battery health, if there's any data that's in there. I don't think there is, but it would be interesting to know. One other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the batteries themselves. So lithium ion batteries have been around for a fairly long time. The um, lithium ion batteries that you have in a phone, for example, they're a small battery that puts off about uh, three volts, um, something in that range. So you're, you're getting something out of your, out of your phone. It's rechargeable, um, and the recharge, it should last through about 10,000 cycles or something like that. It's a very large number of cycles that it can go through. So you, uh, you keep recharging your phone that way. The car has something different in it. These, these uh, batteries that are in the cell phones, they're kind of squarish in shape. This car has something that looks very much like a AA battery. So in fact, it's actually just a little bit bigger than a AA battery. It's shaped exactly the same, and it's just a tiny bit bigger than the AA. These batteries, a AA battery puts out about one and a half volts. These batteries can put off about three volts each. They're all wired together and they're in groups. So they have these little pods of batteries that they put in there. They just group them all together and that's one battery pack. Then there's another battery pack and so on. And there's, uh, I believe it's about 6,000 batteries that are in this car. So 6,000 of those AA batteries basically are on the underside of the car between the uh, front and the front tire and the back tire all the way across. It's a huge number of batteries. So you can understand why the car is so heavy and so bottom heavy. But that's what the batteries look like. And these batteries are charged just like the other lithium ion batteries by taking electricity and moving them through there. So it's just an interesting way that this works. So you have this combination of all these different batteries that are in there and they're collecting all this, uh, this electro uh, the electrons and then uh, providing it as power for the car. Now I have heard that Tesla is working on a new battery type that would uh, make that more efficient and do it better. But it is interesting how they've set it up so far to have these batteries that work in the car like that and they look just like AA batteries. It's really funny when you think about it. I also understand that uh, because I bought the standard range and not the standard range plus, what they did is they did a software adjustment to reduce the number of batteries or the usage of the batteries. I don't think they actually cut the batteries out of the circuit. They just use the batteries and sometimes, I think sometimes it goes to some batteries and sometimes it goes to others. But what they're giving me is, Instead of giving me 60 kilowatt hours of battery, they're giving me like 55. Um, so the standard, the standard range plus uh, would work off a 60 kilowatt hour battery. This has a slightly less, uh, lesser amount that I can travel. So they're actually just eliminating some of the kilowatt hours out of the batteries. So I'm essentially using fewer of the batteries at any given time. Now I also understand, and this is where I have a question for Tesla. I have heard that they actually don't leave any empty slots in there for the batteries, that they're, all the batteries are in there for a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack, that they have all the batteries in there, but they just don't turn them on if you're driving a 60 kilowatt hour uh, driving range, which is essentially what I've got. So as I understand it, there are batteries that are in there that are essentially not being used. And it is possible that they don't actually put the batteries in there, they just leave them out and they leave the space there or they may put a weight in there to keep the weight ratio the same. I'm not sure how that works. I haven't been able to find any evidence either way to support whether it's they're in there or they're not in there. Now the other thing to keep in mind is because of the way the battery pack is on the bottom of the car, it is accessible uh, by putting the car up basically on a, on a lift, although they don't put the cars on a lift, they actually drive them up on something. Uh, they actually uh, can unscrew and unattach, and detach the entire battery pack, drop it out, and put a new battery pack in to replace it. So if you want to upgrade your battery pack from the 60 to the 75, you can do that. 
or you can actually uh, take the batteries uh, take the batteries out if you need to replace them for some reason they got damaged something happened to them you can actually replace the batteries that way too so this is something interesting they can do if they need to now I don't think you know the battery warranty is like eight years on the battery so I don't think that's gonna be a problem I don't see any battery usage degradation so I don't think it's gonna be a problem but it's just something interesting that they can do so these are a lot of the things I've been thinking about with my car like I said I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to this stuff I, uh, I actually started my studies in electrical engineering was always fascinated by the electrical theory and the circuits that are there didn't finish there but I am an engineer by trade but not an electrical engineer just to be clear and uh, I really but I do understand this stuff and I totally appreciate where it, what's going on there and how they did this and it is fascinating to me um, so I, I spend a lot of time in deep in thought thinking about these kinds of things because that's the kind of geek I am and uh, I like to understand how these things work so when I look at it I go wow this is really cool I'm actually putting something in there and I'm, and I'm uh, drawing the energy out of it when I need it so I think keeping in the 50 to 80 percent range is exactly what I want to be doing and I think it suits me better um, so I will charge up basically a couple of times a week unless I need the battery for some reason this is the whole reason I wanted an electric car was this whole thing about being able to use electricity differently we're changing the paradigm someday in the not too distant future I believe that charging will happen using induction instead of direct contact uh, with the uh, with the batteries so essentially on your floor you would have a plate that then would uh, generate electromagnetism that then would charge the batteries it's coming it's just a little far off at this point but I think that that's gonna be the next evolutionary step so you don't even have to plug in you just basically drive over a plate and it starts charging you so all of these things are really important and uh, they're important to understand as far as the Tesla goes and how the how the battery works so I wanted to share that with you that's just my take for today and uh, I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed uh, hearing a little bit of my geekiness about the uh, the battery and using the battery and uh, some of the voltage and current and so forth and all these fun things these little topics that come up and I hope I didn't bore you too much don't worry there's no lesson here